I think it is more than fair to say that a lot of my subs enjoy them some manga. And chances are, if you enjoy manga, you'll definitely be watching those anime adaptations coming out soon. But something that I've often talked about is because of this super high demand for more manga, more anime series to latch onto, because it has such a growing community behind it, that they're often busting out a lot, <laughs> perhaps maybe even too much, just trying to hit any series against the wall to see what sticks, to see what is the next big popular thing that is going to give them some major wave of success. And there has been some worry that because the anime manga industry is adapting and putting so many so much money into publishing all kinds of different series to meet the demand, or to meet beyond the demand, there's some worry that maybe quality will drop. In some cases, I have seen quality drop. Some series that they've tried to rush out way too early. Some stuff in which they adapt the anime before the manga, and the manga comes out and it's all like super quick sketches and 3D models everywhere. But another big, big worry when it comes to meeting the high demand of anime is outsourcing. Now, did you know that a lot of your anime that you've been watching is not made locally in Japan, but a lot of it tends to be outsourced to China and sometimes, of course, Korea, other Asian countries. So this is a recent article briefly talking about the, the worries of outsourcing to China given their, of course, you know, the country has been quite aggressive in recent years. And you kind of wonder if that's too much dependence to put onto another country for all these anime series. I mean, you, you don't really have to ask if. It is. It's a lot of, a lot of dependence to be putting on another country to be producing the animation for so many of your heavy hitting series. But the reason why they do it is not not just because it's cheaper, because they just have too much, too many orders to fill, so to say. But getting further into what is actually in this article. During a new interview with American Foreign Press News, given in the promotion of its upcoming Netflix series Pluto, MAPPA and M2 Animation Studios founder and Madhouse co-founder Maso Moriyama warned that due to an overall tilt towards commercialism, having stifled creativity, the Japanese anime industry is actively at risk of being overtaken by their rising Chinese competitors. Japan is so hell-bent on cranking out money-spinning genres, they mean money, money-spitting genres? Uh, anyway, such as those starring kawaii cute female characters, that its anime doesn't necessarily outshine America's Disney or France's art house productions in terms of creativity. I don't know if America's Disney is a... I don't know. They're really putting out too creative stuff. I, I don't know much about uh, France's art house productions, but if you're looking for stuff that doesn't outshine America's Disney, you you really got to make it low bar. What creativity? <laughs> They're just rebooting everything. The only reason China hasn't quite caught up with Japan yet is because a bunch of restrictions imposed on free expression there. If more freedom is unleashed in China, Japan will be overtaken in no time. They do have a much bigger population in China and uh, less human rights. <laughs> you can bust out a lot more anime in China than in Japan for sure. I mean, if you were only restricted to making animation within your country yeah that would be a that would be a problem of course at least in terms of output in terms of quality i don't know who can really say in hopes of getting further clarification of muriyama's claims regarding a potential chinese takeover of the anime medium bounding in the comics reached out to our contact within the industry a currently working Japanese director to see if they could provide us with any additional insight 
on the situation on the ground. How did China manage to successfully invade the Japanese anime industry? China set up a base in Japan to allow Chinese creators to absorb technology from the Japanese and work in China's home country, and it is steadily producing results. China is quick to act, and their funds are lubricated. Japan can't compete with them. In China, there are fewer places to create such things because cute is strictly regulated. Above all, they are very eager to learn technology because animation techniques are not made by the numbers. Fair point. Fair point. You can have a lot of numbers. But if you don't know what you're doing in, in terms of like animating, then it doesn't matter how many people you have on board, it'll still look like crap. For the past decade, Tencent continuously purchased shares of various Japanese companies. I know and most of the companies operating in Japan are under the Tencent umbrella. They will be swallowed up just like Hollywood. Is it possible the Chinese global conglomerate has any influence on the current state of the anime industry? The director says, Because of the popularity of the Chinese distribution, some of your American films are still being made into sequels. That also applies to anime such as JC Staff's Is It Wrong to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon? While the anime's first season was airing in 2015, the sound director told me that despite the rough Japanese home video sales, the JC staff would continue to produce additional seasons. Interesting. Similar to Hollywood, Japan is currently releasing an alarming amount of reboots and sequels to the point where several industry veterans are convinced that the Japanese entertainment industry is running out of original ideas. I don't know if that's true. One of the things that I admire about uh, Japan and uh, manga in general is the fact that a lot of the people who they're picking up the series for, a lot of them are independent. A lot of them don't have the chains on them. They just write first chapter of a potential manga series and then they submit it. And then all of these publishers are looking for the work and they're looking for independent creators and uh, these unique ideas. That's also why you have so many strange out there ideas as far as manga series goes. It's because it's all like independent, at least at first, at first. Once you know you get a publishing deal and you have editors on board, it gets a little bit muddied, you know? Sometimes they'll change stuff to kind of steer it in a direction of being a little bit more generic. Sometimes that can be really frustrating with a series because some, some series I've like picked up because I enjoyed the beginning and then the further I read, the less I like it because I start seeing the executive hand over the story. It's also really frustrating because like, you know, I read a lot of romance manga. There's a lot of romance manga out there that starts off wholesome and simple, and then all of a the sudden, they decide to add in some weird, shitty love triangle or harem twist. And nine times out of 10, I look at what the author said about that choice and they say that it was the editor's choice to boost sales or boost interest or make it seem a little bit more tense in the story. And I feel like that's such a cheap way. I know this is a tangent, but that is such a cheap way of adding tension to a, a, a manga series to the point where it, you, just, you just make your series look exactly the same as this other series that also had the same editor or same editing ideas where they're just like, I know how to boost sales. Let's just add some weird fucking cuck shit. <laughs> Let's just add cheating into the mix. That'll boost sales. It it's really annoying because I don't like all these series feeling the same after you get over what is essentially like the good part. <laughs> A lot of these manga series start off very good and get worse the more that people meddle with them to make them more like other series that have been successful. Because sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes the same tricks just don't work for every single series. Sometimes it's better to just do your own thing. Does the increasing popularity of Chinese distribution explain why lately Japan is experiencing a recent rise in reboots and sequels? And the director says, I do not know if it's connected, but I'm often told by colleagues that original works are dying out. So we dig up old works from the grave. It's interesting. 
It's an interesting point. Has the current anime industry reached a point of no return, or is there still a chance it can escape China's clutches? That may depend on the world situation. However, Japan's white goods was taken over and lost by China. So if relations with China become strained, Japan will not be able to produce the animations that we depend on them for. And that's a really big problem there. One of the biggest parts of Japan right now, it, it really is like the otaku culture that we got going on and all the anime and manga industry is like pulling in numbers but if they can't produce it within country then all of that can be taken away from them and that's not good <laughs> that's definitely not good as far as like them pulling other properties reboots and sequels they've obviously done a couple of reboots i don't think or at least i hope that's not actually a sign that the anime manga industry will stop looking for new independent work. As far as I know, it, there's, I mean, they're still producing new stuff. I know because I've been buying it, but <laughs> I, I get what this director is saying. There are a couple of different anime that they've rebooted. Fruits Basket was rebooted recently. They've got the this, this sequel for Inuyasha that came out. That didn't need to come out. <laughs> so like, I kind of get through their perspective. They're seeing reboots come out, rebooted anime coming out, and uh, sequel anime coming out in place of what could be a new series. And that can be a bit of a bummer to see, especially when they know that we're relying, that Japan is relying a lot more on China throughout the years to be um, producing a lot of these animations. Uh, not just China, of course. The animations also have some Korean names attached to them. But China, you know, got the most people there. <laughs> they know what they're doing. They know how to take control of an industry. So, and that's where the article ends here. Maybe not the happiest video to make and be talking about, but it is something that people should be aware of. As much as people are like kind of jealous of Japan for its success in the comic industry over there, creating all these uh, anime adaptations of the comics and the video games with the comics and all that stuff, as much as that is exciting and even inspirational in a way to see that success, you also got to understand that uh, it comes at a price and Japan has their own problems right now. Even though, like, some people look at Japan like, uh, like a utopia. They have their own culture wars, they have their own issues. One of those issues is low population. They don't have a lot of people in their country right now. It's kind of on a downward spiral. Another one of those problems is, uh, not paying workers very well. <laughs> That's definitely true in the entertainment industry. When you have such high demand, you just want to produce more and more of it, even if you can't afford it. And if people in Japan don't want to work at shitty prices, you're, <laughs> you still need the work done. So you're going to other countries, you're outsourcing. And this is not going to lead to very good things unless they get some control of it now, it'll not lead to good things in the future. You know, I could accept not having an anime adaptation of everything. I could deal with just having anime adaptations of the super popular series. But, you know, that would be the biggest tragedy, right? If China took complete control of the anime industry, if they stopped producing new creative works by, you know, people who start off independent and just are submitting stories. Oh man, that would be terrible. In other independent news, Horizon Quest is still campaigning, but there's only a few days left, so you better jump on it if you've been thinking about backing this campaign. It is an independent comic drawn by me personally, in collaboration with fantasy writer Adam Meisner, if you love fantasy classic adventuring parties, you're gonna wanna pick up this comic. Check out the link below and get your physical copy now or digital copy if you're overseas. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to like the video, subscribe if you want to see some previews of my newer comics coming out. Check out the fan club 
it's an exclusive club for only the uh, the highest of comic intellectuals. I'll have more videos out for you soon, so stay tuned and bye. Program restart.